911 responders. What is a call that you will never forget? My first cardiac arrest call. An old lady had woken up to her husband not breathing. He'd passed at some point during the night it seems. But all I was given at the start of the call was that he wasn't breathing. So I launched into CPR instructions. They live out of town. So it took the ambulance crew about 25 minutes to get out to them. There was nothing crazy about the call and I've dealt with way more traumatic calls in the two years since. But at some point during the call. She realized he was gone and you could hear it in her voice. That shift in tone is what sticks with me. Car wreck. Late night heavily forested mountain road. Drunk woman flying down the highway. Lost control and flipped the car multiple times. We arrive and sh unconscious. Boarded and shipped. After about 45 minutes. We're gearing up to leave is when we find the empty baby car seat. Took another 45 minutes to find the body. A light hearted one. My friend got a call from a very cross sounding old lady that was absolutely furious because her neighbors had stolen her plants. When my friend asked her how she knew it was them. The woman said because there's holes in my yard and she planted them in her iron garden. I'm going to go take them back. I have a shovel. And you probably won't get here in time to do anything about it. Used to work crime scenes and got a call for a suicide. This was my first outdoor decomp scene. The man had been outside dead for a couple days in the middle of August but the day he was found was a rainy one. Because of that. There were maggots everywhere. His face was pretty much gone. His skin was slipping and everything was just sopping wet. I went to take his fingerprint and it all just sloughed off into my glove. I'll never forget that feeling mixed with hearing the maggots and smelling the decay. Four of my five senses were experiencing disgusting sensations. Glad I didn't taste anything that day. Man called to report a male was breaking into his neighbor's vehicle across the street. A few minutes into the call the man came and started to break into the caller's vehicle. A few minutes later the man spotted my caller and broke into his house from the window. Spent 10 minutes listening to physical fight when I finally heard the police enter the house and say there's blood everywhere. Both intruder and caller died. Oh. And another 911 dispatcher had my caller's wife and kids on another line who were hiding upstairs and heard everything. I talked a lot of people who were shot stabbed beaten in the final moments of their lives but you usually get them after the situation occurred. This caller was just trying to look out for his neighbor and I spent a good 15-20 minutes bantering while waiting for officers to arrive and get the auto thief. Getting to joke around and get to know someone's personality before they violently die hit a lot different than taking a call after violence had occurred. I'm not a first responder. But a dentistry student. Dentistry professionals can work in the hospital as trauma surgeons of the face. This facial surgeon showed us a case of a man that didn't pay his drug dealers. They took hit to an empty field and blew his face off with a shotgun and left. Surprisingly the man survived and woke up half an hour later and called the police. They spent hours trying to pinpoint his exact locating because at this point he was somewhere in the middle of an open field and obviously he didn't have eyes anymore to help them. He was taken to the hospital and his surgery took 18 hours but he did survive. Edit. Volunteer firefighter in Europe. Some summers ago we were called as first responders to a motorcycle accident. When we arrived the cyclist was obviously badly hurt after crashing in a car. But he was orientated and seemed okay. Ambulance and helicopter were on their way already. So we just had to stabilize him. Not a minute later he started deteriorating. Another minute later we started CPR. One of the arriving bystanders was a trauma surgeon and started helping immediately. Shortly after the doctor on the helicopter arrived. It was obvious that there was massive internal bleeding. They first tried to relieve pressure by puncturing and then pretty soon decided that the only chance was to open him up. So they managed a clamshell thoracotomy in the middle of the street. And one started to give the heart direct compressions. The bleeding was massive and they discovered that there was a aortic rupture. The blood loss was too extreme and he died there. Still to this day I have to drive slowly when I pass by that stretch of road. 
Holly motorcycle tipped over and the clutch lever went into a four-year-old's eye. Errant was on the line asking what to do. Suddenly. She said. They're going lift the motorcycle. I emphatically told her to tell them to stop and wait for rescue and M's. Rescue ended up cutting off the clutch lever and transporting the kid to hospital. She underwent surgery. That was 1982. Just last year. I met the lead rescue officer and the girl herself. Now fully grown. I wanted to meet the 911 operator that saved her vision. I wasn't going to post. But the stories now make me want to. I work in maritime search and rescue. I was fairly new at my job and the area is quite large that we are in charge of. I had just showed up maybe a month prior still learning the area. We get a call that two smaller private planes had collided midair. It was a horrible day. In total there were 19 people. We only found 12 people. 8 were deceased. And out of the rest who survived. Two later to pass due to complications on the way to the hospitals. Anyone that survived was a miracle to say the least. This was almost a year ago and we still get reports that parts of the plane are washing ashore. Edit. Whoa thanks for the award. And yes this was in Alaska. Someone called stating they had seen a man on a small island on the lake hours ago but now the man was gone and his boat is still out there. An older woman called in a half hour later stating her husband had gone missing. He was last seen taking his boat out on the lake sometime overnight. The increasing tension in her voice as she noticed sheriff's deputies were already dredging the lake was something else. She was calm but clearly actively dealing with the fact her husband was likely dead. They found his body not long after I hung up with her. Sometimes it's the people screaming that get to you. Sometimes it's the quiet acceptance of a horrible truth that stays with you longer. Not a 911 responder. But I will never forget about hearing this one in my area. Student housing in the city's center wasn't up to code. Someone left something burning in the clothing store below and a huge fire broke out. One student was still inside and couldn't get out because there was no fire escape. Trapped. He called 911. He stayed with him till the end. I remember odd things people say under stress. A girl's arm was ripped to shreds in a dog mauling. She kept using the word meat. There's shredded meat everywhere. And she continued to say it as she found pieces of her arm on the ground. Is that a piece of my meat? And hoo hoo hoo. OMG it's my meat. Some others. I brought you the asparagus. The asparagus. Guy who came back from the market to find his partner dead. Come on buddy. Don't do this. It's Valentine's Day. Homeless passerby who started CPR on a distraught woman's husband who collapsed at a gas pump. Comma come on buddy. Don't do this. It's Valentine's Day. IDK this got to me. It's such a compassionate thing to say. If this is what comes to mind under pressure. They must be a good person. Little 4 year old girl got ran over by her grandmother with a lawnmower that was on. It was not the gore or the blood that got me. It was the utter panic of the family. And the way they broke down when the helicopter took off with her inside. Man blew his face off with a shotgun. Wasn't dead yet. Scary. Also. A couple weeks ago I responded to a woman in labor. Get on scene. She had just delivered. She was naked and holding the baby with the cord still coming out of her vagina. She was high as hell and trying to shoot up one last time before she went with us. With her bloodstream still feeding the baby through the cord. Asterisk. Edit. Thank you so much for the wholesome award ha ha ha. A car accident where an elderly woman was sandwiched in the car and clinging onto life. I held her hand as she passed. Sometimes I still feel her hand squeeze. This isn't mine. But a friend of mine fielded this call. An elderly gentleman called 911 to notify them that his wife had passed in her sleep. Only it was like 7 o'clock at night. Apparently he just couldn't deal with it emotionally. So he got her dressed. Took her out to the car. Drove around doing his errands for the day. Watched some TV together. 
and then after 12 or so hours he finally sort of accepted that she was gone and called 911. Not a first responder but I work in the ED. One of our physician's friends is a first responder and got a call for suicide. It was his own house. His daughter hanged herself. Edit. Correction of grammar. My friend is a first responder. He once got a call about a man that had fallen in the shower. He gets there and the guy is over 400 pounds and out cold on the bathroom floor. My friend. His partner and the guy's roommate try everything they can think of to get the guy on the stretcher. But the bathroom is tiny and they can't even roll him over. Eventually they call two more ambulances and finally get the guy out of the bathroom. They get to the elevator and it's too small to fit the guy on the stretcher. So six paramedics have to carry the guy down five flights of stairs. My friend called in sick for the rest of the week cause he was so sore and stiff. He couldn't move. A mother called because her kid pulled a pot of oil off the stove and it spilled on his face. She said she could see the skin peeling off his face. Friendly reminder to never point the handles of your pots or pans off the stove. Not mine but my friend. He's an EMT so his partner is always a paramedic. They arrive on scene and it's this old couple. The wife called saying her husband needs to go to the hospital but the husband is refusing. He's dying of cancer and is already on hospice. He doesn't want to be poked and prodded in hospital when he knows there's nothing they can do to change his prognosis. My friend is packing up his bag in the old man's bedroom after the old man signed AMA. The wife is arguing and yelling with the paramedic in the hallway about taking him. The old man gets out of bed and starts rummaging through his dresser. My friend isn't really watching him. Then bang. Old man shoots himself in the head right there. My friend just stands there now covered in blood and brains. His partner bolts outside thinking the old man is going to shoot all of them and the wife is screaming bloody murder. He had to take the next week off and go through mandatory counseling for a little bit but he's back at work. Got a call for a 3 month old baby that was not responsive. Arrived on scene and was the second person through the door right behind the senior fire officer, SFO. SFO immediately began doing CPR and was therefore unable to take on role of incident commander. I quickly reached up and grabbed the radio off his side and assumed command and control. This happened several years ago and I can still clearly see the child's face. That was a hard day knowing that there was literally nothing we could do. But trying our darn best to do whatever we could. We never did find out the cause of death but it was suspected that the infant passed away from SIDS while taking a nap. Edited to explain SIDS. Sudden infant death syndrome. Infants suddenly stop breathing spontaneously while asleep. I'm not a first responder. But my sister's is a Leo. Her worst story. Was there were two junkies in town. Non-violent criminals. Who had multiple children together all which had been taken away by children's aid services. So there was a report that she had given birth. So Cass wanted police escorts to go get the baby. They knocked on the door. The dad opened it. And just said. Oh. You're here for the baby. Walked across the room. Picked up a swaddled baby and handed the child to my sister. She looked at the baby. This was something like her third or fourth actual shift. Started shaking and crying. The sergeant sees this. Says give it and get back to the car. The baby had been dead for a couple days already. My sister is okay with things now. But that one messed her up for a bit. I used to be a volunteer firefighter and the one that sticks out in my mind was getting a call about an accident involving a semi and motorcycle. The guy driving the motorcycle had a stroke and went under the belly of the trailer. Which lead to his decapitation. Seeing a head detached from the body is quite unnerving. Had a guy who was intoxicated and suicidal and laying on train tracks with a train due by in minutes. We were able to talk him into getting off the tracks and had officers en route. But when he tried to get up. He couldn't because his boot was wedged in between the spokes of the tracks and he could not free it. We tried to get him to undo the laces and slide his foot out. But he couldn't manage that either. Plan C was to stop every train in the entire area until officers were able to get to him. That worked. 
had an ALS call for a suicidal patient who set himself on fire but decided he still wanted to live after 3 seconds so he jumped into a lake. Which was coincidentally nearby so he obviously had doubts as to whether or not he actually wanted to die. We got him fully intubated. I work in a region that covers a lot of forest area. I was patrolling and heading to recertify with my firearms when I passed vehicle tracks leading into the trees where vehicles aren't supposed to be. It wasn't unusual for that spot but I'd never been able to catch anyone up there. Because I was on a timetable. I figured I'd check in it on the way back to the office. After an hour or so. We got a bolo for a potentially suicidal male. He was found dead a couple of hours later. In that exact area I was going to check. And now I can't help but wonder if he was alive when I drove by and I could have done something. Former Leo here. Don't do that my friend. You do what you can when you can and that's all you can do. Have a safe holidays. I worked as an EMT for a while. Went on a call to a trailer park in town for a man having a heart attack. We get there and discover that it was an elderly man who was under the care of a younger couple. The younger couple was being paid to care for him except they were in tow so they were starving him and using the money for other things. He was dying from lack of nutrition. He had long, white, unkept hair and a beard and he wasn't just skinny. He was a skeleton with skin stretched over it like a drum. He was naked except for an adult diaper. We began CPR. Pushed drugs. Defibrillated him. And loaded him into the ambulance to rush to the hospital. Many of his ribs broke from the CPR and he'd arch his back and kick once or twice from time to time. He rallied a couple times because he wasn't sick. But he was just too weak and he passed away. The couple also had a child. Who was standing in the back hallway wordlessly watching this all unfold. CPS got involved. Obligatory I'm not a first responder. But. Comma. I always wonder about the 911 operator that was on the phone with me when I found my. 21F at the time. Brother. 24M. After he hung himself. It's a bit blurry but I remember I was calm. In shock. And I think he started to ask if I needed fire. Police. Or ambulance and as soon as he spoke I said my brother killed himself. I think he asked if I could get him down and try CPR. But as soon as I said his feet are blue he knew he had passed and instructed me to go wait outside on my steps and to stay on the phone till the police got there. I kept saying things like this is so add up. I'm sorry for swearing and he said it's okay. Later I found out that I found my brother about 14 hours after it happened. My poor parents were out of town on vacation too. I called them first before I even called 911. Colon. I once had a call from a 11 year old girl who was just stabbed by her stepfather. She kicked him in the balls and went to hide and call 911. She was scared and I stayed on the line until her stepfather found her. The last thing I heard was her yelling no please don't do it again. Then I heard an angry yell then gurgling. Turns out he stabbed her in the neck one minute before the police got there. I quit the next day. Ran a run of the mill house fire in a McMansion. Fire was small enough we could perform an interior attack. But big enough that it was a little dicey and hot as. Go up into the second floor master bedroom and where the walk-in closet should have been was a SX dungeon filled to the brim with charred leather and scorched deal dos. For years after that fire a charred DL Dio would magically appear in turnout boots. Pockets. Inside helmets. Anywhere inconvenient you can think of. When I was 16 I had a summer job working at a marina at a local lake. This was early 90s and cell phones weren't around. The road to the lake was a twisting. Winding paved road that drivers of sports cars loved. I came around a corner and could tell something bad happened. Out of the corner was a bright yellow corvette convertible upside down and smoking. Going too fast and flipped. I rush out to check. The driver had his head ground down to nothing. I hear moaning and go to the passenger side. The man's wife was still alive but severely injured. I had enough room to reach my hand and to hold hers. She passed away a few minutes later. It haunts me to this day. 
Firefighter EMT recent call actually still fresh in memory only two days ago fatal accident 16 year old female deceased at the scene low speed, 20 kmh, accident but airbags deployed should've been a simple move the cars get them home but she had her feet on the dashboard and the airbags broke her legs one pierced her heart the other damn near decapitated her. So if you ever get the idea putting your feet up on the dash is a good idea. This isn't mine. But my dad went on a call in 1988 where a man had attempted suicide by cutting his wrists. He and his partner each grabbed a wrist and stopped the bleeding. Saved the guy's life. But it wasn't until a week later when they found out why he was trying to die. His wife had left him because of various reasons I'm sure. But these reasons included the fact that he had full blown AIDS. So my dad and his friend had to get tested since they had been covered in this dude's blood. This was before all the protocols surrounding blood and pathogens had been implemented. My dad was negative. But his friend wasn't so lucky. The blood had gotten in his eye. I was 2 years old at the time. He quit doing calls soon after. His friend died 7 years ago of AIDS related things. Not a 911 operator but I used to work for a private company working with police that would contact us with subpoenas or emergency disclosure. There was a situation where a riddish air driver had driven off allegedly on accident with an infant in the backseat when the parents exited the vehicle before the parents had the chance to open the back door and get the baby out of the backseat. I talked to both the cops and the parents. The guy said he would drop the baby off at the nearest police station instead of turning around to drop the baby off which made everyone mad. Then he says oh I got another ride request so I will drop it off at a different station that was even farther away. The cop said grabbed the cell phone from the mother, I was on the dad's line so I could hear everything, and the cop bellowed out. If you don't turn around right now I will your whole life up. In the most enraged voice I had ever heard. And the guy turned around and returned the baby immediately. Listening to the screams of a 5 year old and his parents when their 4 wheelers gas tank exploded showering the kid with flaming gasoline. Not to me directly but happened in our far house years before, horror story from the 70s. Comrades shared with everyone to stress the importance of hazardous chemical exposure. There was a chemical leak, I don't know what chemical exactly, and a subsequent fire. The team responded and one of the firefighters turnouts ended up getting pretty heavily soaked in the chemical bath. Upon returning to the firehouse, his young daughter was there waiting. She gave him a hug and got the chemical all over herself. The substance was extremely toxic and she got ill and eventually passed a couple days later. The firefighter went through extreme depression afterwards and ended up committing suicide. Never forget that safety protocols and regulations are written in blood. Instead of bringing up a red up call I'll bring up a funny one. We went for a call to meet the police for an assault. We get there the guy had been assaulted with a frozen turkey. Whacked over the head with it. Big lump already formed. Guy had gotten into an argument with his old lady and she bopped him upside the head with the bird. He ended up fighting the cops and his wife and mother tried to jump in so I'm holding them back as the cops are wrestling with him. Cops ended up transporting him so we cleared and went back in service. Turns out the same guy had gotten whacked in the head by a 2x4 the week prior to. I'm a volunteer firefighter. We got called out to car accident. When we got there the driver had gotten himself out. But was very dazed and confused. Said he was with his baby girl but we couldn't find her. There was a bunch of stuff that was thrown from the car. Clothes. Tool. Toys. Etc. We had to go through everything looking for her. Kept picking up pieces of clothing expecting to see a little girl laying there. I was the longest shortest time of my life. Happy ending. The guy was confused. He didn't actually have his daughter with him. My daughter was born about 6 weeks before that accident. Gave me some nightmares for a while.